Michael, I, I don't even know how to frame this for you. I, I mean, I just, I just, I just tried, uh, but th this, uh, this is the the roughest seas we have seen in the post presidency of any president. That is for sure. And could I have a word on your earlier conversation? about the stuff where Trump supposedly had a standing order yes. to have declassified all those documents that he took home and studied, I assume, by candlelight. Uh, now, the question I've got, and maybe I should ask this for our legal scholars, so does that mean that all those documents about nuclear weapons that we've been hearing about this week that were stuffed into the basement of Mar-a-Lago, are those declassified too? Uh, that, which is great news for people in my business because I'll go and get a sleeping bag tonight and sleep outside the National Archives waiting for it to open so I can get to read those documents if they're open to everyone and declassified. Shows a little bit how far-fetched this whole explanation is. Uh, back to what you spectacularly raised, Lawrence. Uh, we went to see President Biden eight days ago on Thursday. He still had COVID, so he was sitting up in that office upstairs uh, that used to be the treaty room. Presidents now use as an office. They sit at a table that used to be that of Ulysses Grant's cabinet. And we were down in the map room downstairs, two floors below. So we talked to him by video link, about four or five of us, for about two hours. And... Uh, Interestingly enough, with the, with the big exception, needless to say, of Donald Trump, presidents in recent times have tended to call on scholars and historians uh, sort of in the same way. Uh, everyone except Trump, I've been at these, these sessions all the way back to Bill Clinton, and they don't always ask the question, but the subtle uh, expectation is that we will talk to the president about what in these times reminds us of something in history. And not to make my answer too long, but most of us said some form of the same thing, which is democracy is in danger, reminds us of 1860 when we were at the precipice of the Civil War, and also the 1930s when a lot of people in this country were out of work and dissatisfied, looking for answers, and there were fascists that had an awful lot of support. We saw this week uh, one crazed uh, Trump supporter uh, go, go straight at the FBI. He ended up dead, uh, as will all other and any other crazed Trump supporters armed with firearms who go after the FBI. They will all end up dead. There might not be any more of them. The, the uh, disincentive might have been established this week. Uh, but... We haven't heard anything from Donald Trump about that, about his supporters uh, doing that. We haven't heard Republicans closing ranks around the FBI going, for example, to FBI headquarters or Republican members of Congress going to their local uh, FBI office and standing there with them uh, in, in unity. And that, too, outside of the presidential realm. That, too, is something that we've never seen before, where, you know, the, the FBI is attacked. And no one in the Republican Party thinks they have to step forward and, and do or say anything about that. That's the scary part, because American conservatives, whether you agreed with them on every issue or not, they believed in three things. They supposedly believed in the rule of law. They supposedly believed in protecting our institutions of democracy. And they supposedly believed in protecting our national security. And what we're seeing with Donald Trump and those Republican leaders, which is most of them who are kneeling at his feet, they're basically saying, we don't care about the rule of law anymore. National security, you want you know, nuclear documents in your basement? Be our guest. We will not criticize you. We will bless it as soon as possible. And as far as institutions like the FBI or the Department of Justice or the Defense Department, you know, let's just run those down, too, and make sure that the public has no respect for those so that conservatives or people who call themselves conservatives these days are oftentimes not conservatives, but I would say members of the radical right, people who want to destroy, and in certain cases, anarchists. We're living in a world that's upside down. 